Dear Bess, you'll never guess who I'm visiting in New York. Maddie Jensen, your favorite soap star from Light of Our Love. Of course, I'll try to get her autograph for you, but this is a business trip. Maddie is renting Aunt Eloise's apartment in New York, and after hearing about my last case, Secrets Can Kill, Maddie called Aunt Eloise to invite me up here. According to Maddie, Rick Arlen is getting death threats, but he won't go to the police, so she wants me to do some investigation work. Can you imagine anyone not liking Rick Arlen, daytime's cutest hunk? I have a sneaking suspicion, though, that there's more to this case than meets the eye. Call you later. Nancy. Come in, it's open. I set up the sofa bed for you. I hope it's not too uncomfortable. I set up the guest bedroom for you upstairs. Pappas is our producer. He's all bark and no bite. Sometimes I think his only job is to yell at us. I guess he's upset at Rick's leaving the show. They are the roses from French monsieur who I do not know. He is très, how do you say, bon, no? I guess the light of our love plays up in France or something. Aren't they gorgeous, though? You know, there is. How could I have been so stupid? It's Yuri. It's got to be Yuri. Okay. Please do whatever you need to do to find out what's going on. It's a talent entrance so we don't get mobbed by our fans. Sorry, Nancy. I can't give you the key code. Pappas wouldn't be very happy if he found out I gave it to you. No, only stagehands and crew know. You may want to ask Lillian for it. On second thought, she probably won't give it to you. Oh, Pappas is going to kill me if I give it out. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to give you the code. After all, it is for a good cause. Hmm, it was just changed because of the weird things going down. Let me think. Okay, it's 2481. Hi, Nancy. We need to talk. I found out you took my keys to get into my desk. How could you? I know you need to investigate and everything, but I thought we were friends. I thought you could trust me. Well, I wanted Rick to stay with the show, so I sent him fake fan letters telling him how great he was as Rory. I guess it was pretty silly, but I'll miss him if he leaves. I understand that. I just thought you could have been a bit more considerate. I guess those letters did look pretty mysterious if you didn't know what was in them. And to tell you the truth, I guess they look pretty silly now that you've read them. But I'll miss Rick terribly if he leaves the show. <sighs> to tell you the truth, I'm still in love with him. But I need to realize that we're through and move on. <laughs> I did. Oh, he's just a pussycat. But I told you he's a flirt. <laughs> he's just trying to be charming. He went to France for a week and now all of a sudden he's fluent. Do you have an appointment? In that case, I suggest you learn to read. I don't have all day to play with the door. I'll buzz you in one more time. No, she hasn't discussed this with me, but it wouldn't surprise me. I know Rick has been pressuring her to leave me and to sign on with a high-profile agency. It's saddening to hear this, but I'm hopeful Maddie will remain loyal to me. To spite me, I believe. I think it embarrasses him that I know of his lowly beginnings, when he was just Rick Abertusky ready to take the worst acting jobs for next to nothing. I seem to have lost my wallet at the studio. Has anyone turned it into you? How can I get into the lost and found area of the studio? What did she lose? Perhaps I can find it for her. Is Maddie thinking of going into films? Would she need another agent to do this? I think you're right. Maddie does feel loyal to you. Why on earth does she work if she owns the studio? She's down the hall, but if you need something, ask a stagehand, okay? Oh, a word of warning. Old Millie isn't playing with a full deck. She actually owns WB, but for some reason she spends her time running the prop room and setting up all the locks. Don't ask me why. If she can pay the bills, I don't care what she does. What? You're kidding. I need him for tomorrow's shoot. Are you sure? I gotta call Dwayne. Shut the door on your way out. Dwayne, it's Lillian at Worldwide. I just heard Spader's leaving us. If you think... Oh? Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Be sure to close the door on your way out. Oh, I'm not the resident maniac, if that's what you're thinking. In fact, I asked you here because... Well, because he's after me now. Cut! Look out! We're gonna die! Get him out of here! Hush! Don't say the answer. Everyone will hear you. Kindly write the answer on this slip of paper, and I'll tell you if you're correct. Don't think that just because I've been around the soundstage a couple of times, I don't know what's going on in my company. There's more to me than meets the eye, my dear. Oh, yes, Ms. Wise is very talented, but I think she's wasting it here. She belongs out west, making those artsy films all of you young people are doing these days. I think she and Yuri were making a film of some kind. What? I don't fear anyone. They've got more reason to fear Millie Strathorn. Yes, sirree, Bob, but don't be afraid of Mr. Pappas. He's a very nice gentleman from Baltimore, I believe. It's Rory Dunner that should fear Pappas, especially if Rory ends up leaving Serena. Uh, Dwayne Powers, uh, Dwayne Powers, mm, where have I heard that name? Oh, yes! Now I remember. He was that young man who did that fine performance in A Courier's Tragedy. I'll speak with Lillian about hiring him. A superb actor, really. Young lady, what do you know about typewriters? There's nothing like the sound of the metal hitting paper as you peck, peck, peck at the keys when you're writing a new script. Peck, peck, peck makes me feel like a chicken sometimes. <laughs> Now that I think of it, perhaps I should get a computer. After all, they've given me a, what do you call it, a tree trunk, a, a login. For the past couple of weeks, that typewriter's been nothing but trouble. It's taken on a mind of its own, typing its own letters and such. What is greater than God, more evil than the devil, the poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you'll die. Right. Isn't it filmed in Paseo del Mar? That's where you're from, right? No, but I'm willing to take your application for the job. I'll give my agent a call. He can direct you to a decent agent in your league. And just do me a favor and stay away from Dwayne. He's the kiss of death for an actor. <laughs> Whoa, you got me there. Can we uh, rewind this and try this one again? Okay, Nancy. You got me. I started all of this by sending myself those ransom-style notes. But I had nothing to do with everything else that followed. You gotta believe me. I just did this to get some publicity, not kill myself. Well, let's just say it was love at first sight. Hello there, Ms. Drew. That was a fine job you did with that bomb. I'll need to keep a closer eye on you in the future just so that you don't find yourself in another dangerous situation. And I'll need to see you pass every time you enter the studio. You, with a gun. Freeze! Drop it. Drop that gun. Get down on the ground. Get your hands behind your head. You got the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You had the right to an attorney. Ah, shut up. Stop your squirming. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> time for you to move on out of here. There ah, you go. I got three words for you, pal. Adios! Dear Dad, I'm still in New York house-sitting for Maddie while she's on vacation. Dwayne is now awaiting trial for his attempted murder and has publicly apologized for his crimes. Lillian has moved out to California and is directing her first film. But the best news is about Maddie and Rick. They finally decided to tie the knot. <laughs> well, as Serena and Rory. But who knows? Perhaps it'll rub off on them. There's always hope. Love, Nancy.